Well, hi class. Today what I'd like to do right off the bat is I want to review the sample outline for the informative speech. Most of you have turned in your outlines, but a lot of you still have some work to do and a lot of it is focusing on how to plug the source citations into the outline effectively. So what I'd like to do now is go right to the modules and then I'm going to walk you through the sample outline that you have on your Canvas module for the informative speech. Let's go ahead and go to that module now. Okay, so we're on the modules now, week four and five, and so we want to go right here, informative sample outline. And so let's go ahead and click on that. And now we have the sample outline for the informative speech. All right. And so when you're putting your outline together, you want to use this sample outline as a guide. And the way to ensure that your outline is done correctly, compare your outline to the sample outline. If it looks the same, then you're good, right? In fact, I don't mind if you want to copy the outline, put it on a Word document or Google, Google Docs, whatever you're using, and then take your content and then just take out the content here, plug your content in, your attention get it topic sentence and so on that will ensure that the outline is done correctly now with that said as far as the big picture structure as far as getting the introduction the body main points conclusion you guys are all doing a good job there so you've got the basics down but where some of you are still struggling is in figuring out how to incorporate your source citations into the flow of the outline and you have to remember if you don't tell your audience where you're getting your information during the speech, they won't know, right? And because it's kind of clunky, you don't want to get to the end of a point and go, and I got all this information, and then you tell your actual sources. It breaks up the flow of the presentation. And you don't want to have a really strong impact at the end of the speech and, oh, yes, let's go to my work site. So you've got to cite the sources during the flow of the actual speech. So when you're plugging your sources in, you want to put them into the text of the outline and write it out so you're actually saying the source citation in the speech. All right, so let's go back to the introduction, okay? So you're first, and by the way, a few of you, when you get to your topic sentence, right, that's just a single sentence, and it needs to sound like a topic sentence, right? So something that's, that kind of ties the attention getter into the topic. This brings me to the topic. And then you have a clear presentation of the topic. And the reason why that's important, you never want an audience to be confused about what the topic of the speech is. Then they're trying to figure out the topic and then they miss the significance, which you go to next. All right. So when you get to the next point, this is the third section. In the introduction, establish significance. You should have a minimum of two subpoints here. The first one would be your reason why you think the topic is significant to the audience. And then you also want to ensure, this is where your first source citation goes, that you have a source of evidence that also tells the audience, yo, this is a significant, important topic. It's relevant to you, so listen up. Now, whenever you cite a source, you only need to tell us three things. The title of the publication. So here we see it right here, ESPN Magazine. Notice I'm not giving the title of the article. I don't need that. If the audience knows the publication, they have the author and the date, they can find the information. And the titles of the articles are always longer, so harder to remember, harder for the audience to remember. So the short, so, so the source citations need to be short and they need, need to be clear. And so three components, and we see this here. Furthermore, according to Chris Haney, that's the author of the article in ESPN Magazine. That's the title of the publication. And then I give the complete date, April 17, 2017. And that's all I need for the source. And notice I'm putting it in to the flow, to the text of the speech. After this, I don't have a hyperlink to the source, right? I don't need to put additional sources there. That's all I need. That's all the audience needs. Then you go from your significance right into the thesis statement. And some of you, I'm getting paragraphs for the thesis statement. 
Your thesis statement is one sentence. It does two things. It tells us your intent, which really is either to inform or persuade, and you repeat the topic. So my thesis statement here, the purpose of my speech is to inform you about the impact of replay review. And then you can kind of change language around the purpose of my speech is to get you better acquainted with, right? So you can use language to make it sound a little more personal, right? So it doesn't sound so cookie quarter, cookie uh, cutter, but two things in the thesis, your intent, repeat the topic of the speech. Then when you get to your preview, you just need to tell us the titles of the main points in the order in which you're going to present them. And because you should put the body of the outline first, put the body of the outline together first, then do the introduction and the conclusion. When you get to the body of the speech, put your headings in. Some of you just have main point one, main point two, main point three. Well, that makes it difficult when then I go to write the preview, I have to figure out what the titles are. If you put the titles in, now whenever I write my preview and my summary in the conclusion, I just look at the titles which are already in the outline. And then you should have one source citation in each of your three main points. And you just kind of figure out where you want to put those, but they need to be in the flow and the dialogue of the speech. So here you see a source citation in main point one on the history of replays. One of the more significant improvements, according to Tom Verducci, that's the article, uh, excuse me, that's the name of the author, in an article in Sports Illustrated, that's the title of the publication, June 7, 2019, that's the day. And when you're citing information from a source, it's always best to paraphrase, 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 <laughs> paraphrase the information, because it's easier for you to remember, easier for the audience to remember. So you hardly ever, unless it's really, really crucial to the speech, do you want to take stuff from a source and put it into the speech word for word? You're going to be much better off if you paraphrase it, easier for you to remember, easier for the audience to remember once you deliver the information. And then make sure when you get to the end of that first main point, you end it with the transition. Transitions should do two things. Tell us the title of the main point you're leaving and tell us the title of the main point that you're going into, right? That's a good, complete transition. When we get to the persuasive speeches, I'll show you there should be three components to a transition. Tell us the title that you're leaving, restate your thesis, which you're just reinforcing your persuasive intent, and then tell us the title of the main point that you're going into. Before the informative speech, you just need to tell us, all right, I'm done with the history of replays, so now let's take a look at replays today, or as more eloquently put in this outline, the first replay, while seemingly minor, unlocked the door to our next point of consideration, replay reviews today. Now I go into my second main point. I should have a source citation somewhere in the main point in the actual text of the outline. And here we find it right here, according to NFL.com. So now notice I'm using a website. If you are citing information from a website, give us the web, at, or excuse me, give us the title of the website. Don't give us the long address, all right? So here the title of the website is actually nfl.com. So I'm telling you the name of the website and then I give the actual date. Now, I'm missing an author here and I don't like to do that. The only time that if I can't find an author that I'll use the source, if it's pretty clear that the publication or the website that I'm using really looks to be credible. So I think if I'm talking about re instant replay in the NFL, NFL.com is a pretty reliable source. But if this was just some random website, right, then it would be important to have the name of the author in. And that's kind of the tricky thing when it comes to using sources that you get from the internet. In fact, Good advice. As you navigate through your college careers, as much as possible, try to use hard published sources, stuff that's coming from a publication rather than something from a website. It's just easier to find the dates and the authors in actual publications than on websites. But if you do use a website, 
make sure that you give us the name of the website, not the long ass web address, and then make sure that you have an author and a date, depending on how credible the website appears. Now, I'm gonna finish up main point two, and then I've got another transition. With this understanding, notice I'm re-emphasizing the point that I just spoke on. With this understanding of the role of replay reviews today, let's consider the benefits and drawbacks. All right, and just kind of a note, I know some of you were kind of still trying to figure out the difference between an informative and a persuasive speech, and that's not easy to do. I've always felt like the most difficult concept to teach in public speaking is to get students to understand the difference between a, an informative speech and a persuasive speech. And the reason why that's so important, we'll use a completely different structural format for the persuasive speech where persuasion's harder, right? It's way easier to get up and teach, right? But to get people to do something, that's a lot more difficult. And so we've got another outline we'll use for that that'll walk the audience down the persuasive path. But for the informative speech, we're just going to stick with our set outline with our three main points. And then when I get to the conclusion, notice I do not need to transition at the end of my last main point because we go right into the conclusion. And then when you structure the conclusion, make sure that I see the three sections just like we do in the, in, in the introduction, right? So I want to see all the sections. Also, too, notice the spacing. Everything spread out, easy to see. If I'm practicing and I need to glance down, I can quickly find my line and get back on track. More importantly, if I'm using the outline to deliver speech, I momentarily forget that next line. I can easily glance down, find my place, look up, and get back into the flow of the speech. All right, so in the conclusion, you wanna make sure that you have a review or summary, and here all you're doing is you're restating the titles of the main points in the order that you presented them. And if you do the summary correctly, you'll never have to say in conclusion again in a speech. When you hit that summary, the audience says, oh, okay, we're getting to the end of the speech. And then the second thing I wanna do is I just wanna restate my thesis, right? Now it's more past tense. Hopefully now you have a better understanding of replay review. Then I wanna end my speech with a strong sense of finality, and that's the end of the conclusion. So notice in this outline, you can see examples of how to plug your source citations incorrectly. One in the significance. You've got one source citation in main point one, main point two, and main point three, and I have good, clear transitions at the end of my first main point, at the end of my second main point. So this is what I want your outlines to look like. So when you're putting your outline together, you want to make sure you're using this as an actual guide. All right, so hopefully now you have a really good understanding of how to put that outline together. The second thing that I want to talk about is just to give you a couple principles to follow when it as you're now getting ready to work on your delivery of the informative speech that's due on the 19th. And what's so important that you understand with public speaking, you never want to write your speech, prepare your outline, and then turn around and give the speech. If you really want to be effective as a public speaker, and if you really want to get a handle on controlling the nervous anxiety and really developing your confidence, a good rule to follow is always to have a week between completing your outline and delivering the speech because you want to work on the delivery. And so things like eye contact, that's just a result of being familiar with the outline. And for this speech, I want you looking into the camera at least two thirds of the time. So, okay, if you want to glance down at your outline, but you've got to pop your head up and you want to make sure that your eyes are on the camera throughout most of the presentation. Look, eye contact is one of your most powerful weapons as a speaker. Same thing in communication. If you really want to engage people, you have to look at them. So when it comes to public speaking, anytime you speak, you want to have your speech down well enough so you can use your eyes to engage and maintain the attention of the audience as you're navigating through the overall speech. And that takes practice. Also too, 
I'm not a proponent of memorizing your speech. And one of the reasons why is typically when you remember, when you memorize a speech, you start at the beginning and you work to the end. So usually the ending of the speech isn't as effective as the beginning. Also too, I can always tell when somebody has memorized a speech because when they get stuck, they'll typically go back to the start of the same sentence. And now for my next point, I'd like to focus and now for my next point, I'd like to focus on what I think is the most important part of this speech, right? And we don't want that. So what I recommend is just repeating your speech over and over and over again. And I think I've mentioned this before, but the ideal way to prepare for any kind of presentation is have your outline completed one week in advance of the due date. And then you just pick up that outline and you just read your speech straight from the outline three times a day, every day. And what you'll find is that constant repetition, repetition, you suddenly start retaining the information. That's why when you're driving somewhere, you've got the radio going, you're, and you're listening to music, and all of a sudden one of your favorite songs comes on from about 30 years ago, and you know every line to the song. And it's not like I ever said, hmm, I really like Hotel California by the Eagles. I'm going to commit that song to memory. No. You've just heard it so many times over and over and over again. I know every word of the song and I never tried to memorize it. That's the concept that I'm after. Repetition is the key to retention. Now, each time you read, you read your speech out loud, focus on a different delivery technique. So maybe one time I'm just going to read it out loud and work on my vocal variety. I'm trying to say every line a little bit differently from the previous one. I'm shifting my rate a little louder, a little softer. I'm picking up my rate so it's a little bit faster, and then I want to use pauses and really slow down to really make impact. So I want to work on that vocal variety. Another time, I might think about what am I doing with my hands, right? How can I gesture effectively? And you work on those overall gestures. Another time, you might want to go ahead and do a practice recording and just really work on maintaining as much eye contact as you possibly can. But I promise you, if you have your speech outline prepared one week in advance of the due date, and that's kind of how I have the module set up for the informative and the persuasive speeches, I'm trying to give you that gap so you have time to practice your speech. That's going to build your confidence. It's going to make this speech presentation much more effective. So you've got to make sure you put in that practice time three times a day, every day, just read your speech out loud, out loud from the outline. And then once you get to day three or four, now you kind of want to play this game. It's almost like holding your breath. See how far you can get through a section of the speech without having to glance, dot, glance down and pick up the next line. That's another reason why I emphasize the spacing in the speech so you can clearly identify each line. Look, if you have all your information for a sub point in a big five sentence paragraph and you get stuck halfway through the paragraph, now when you glance down, it's harder to pick up the next line. So when you're preparing an outline, it's important to follow the rule that I mentioned before, one sentence per sub point. Spread the outline out it's easier to use not only when you're practicing your speech, but it's easier to use if you're using your outline to actually deliver the speech. So it's real important that you understand all of the components of the outline. That's why I'm emphasizing getting your outlines done correctly. It's so important to being an effective public speaker. I know when I went back to college, I was about 25, like a lot of you in this class out working, doing some other things. And when I finally decided to go back to school, I had a lot of public speaking experience under my belt. But the thing I didn't realize is that there are different structural formats that I can use to organize and structure my information and that certain formats fit different kinds of speeches. So for me, that was just so vital and so important to my growth as a speaker. So you've got to get the outlines done effectively, and then you want to know how to effectively practice. So now you can have a dynamic delivery when it comes time to give your presentation. All right. I'm really looking for your best efforts, both on ensuring that your outlines are done correctly and that you're getting the practice time in so you can deliver 
of speech effectively. All right. Also, too, last thing. Tomorrow, a little bit hard to get a hold of me. I'm heading to Arizona tomorrow. I'm going to go check on my folks. They're both in their late 80s. Both survived uh, COVID, but I haven't seen them uh, in over a year. And so I need to get there and just kind of check up on my folks, make sure everything's going okay. So I'll be on the road tomorrow. I'll be traveling. Uh, so if you send me an email tomorrow, I may not get a response until Wednesday evening or more, more likely on Thursday. Okay, but then after that, I'm here for you. All right, you guys, work hard. Give me your best efforts, all right? I know it's there. You guys are a talented group. I want to see you guys really nail the next two speeches, the informative and the persuasive. All right, we'll see you.